Alright you guys, just a quick video that uh, had a topic come up and I want to explain it so that those of you who don't understand how to do the Xbox game sharing um, will understand and realize that it's a dang good thing. Okay, so what you're going to do is on your console you're going to set whichever console you want to be your home console. What this means is that your profile is the king of that console and anything that you own is available to anybody on that console. So if somebody else puts their profile on there on your home console they can play all your games without you being logged in just because it's on your console. So what this does is open up a fantastic dynamic of being able to do console sharing and save a lot of money on games. Um, you'll see what I'm saying here in, in a second. So, so my son Tucker plays the Series S over here. I made that my home console because on my list of games I have hundreds of games um, and he has all access to them. Now what this also does, see I can jump onto my Series X, log in and play and he can just log into his profile on my home console and play all the stuff as well. So if you have your profile logged in, you have access to everything you've purchased, no matter what console that you're on. So making someone else's console your home console is a way to game share. Now, there is a downside to this. Uh, first off, let's, let me show you how to make your console your home console. So, in this first video here, um, just step by step here, you go push the cursor up to your profile picture, hit it, press my account, go to general, and then to personaliz personalization. So go to the right, and then go down all the way to make make my make this my home xbox it'll give you the option it'll say do you want to make this your home xbox i've already made this one mine so um what it will do then is become your home console so anybody that logs on to that will have access to all your games you've purchased um fantastic the next thing i wanted to do is put in a plug for game pass now game pass not only is this is a fantastic service. It's basically like Netflix of gaming. Um, but you can also use Game Pass through game sharing. So, again, Tucker is on my home console, has full access to Game Pass, while I still have full access to my games and Game Pass on my console over on the other screen. So that's my home console. And I'm not logged into it. When I log into that one, I have access to all my stuff. While simultaneously, Tucker has access to all my stuff here. So, there are some pros and cons to this. Um, the pros being, now Tucker has access to all my games. That's fantastic, because then it makes it to where when we want to get a new release, like, he recently bought Harry Potter, so he made his console the system I play on. I made my home console the one that he plays on. So any game that each other buys, the other person can play. Simultaneously, even while the other person is playing it, because they don't have to be logged into the home console in order for you to reap those benefits. So Tucker bought the Harry Potter game, and since that's his home console, I have full access to the game. Um... My home console is the one he plays on, has access to Game Pass and all the games that I've purchased, which are numerous. Um, so he's very happy about that, because he has access to hundreds of games. Um, so that's just a plug for the home console bit. If you have questions about that, let me know. It's very simple. But there is a downside. Now the downside is, if you are not connected online, then there is no access. Yeah, so if you, if you are not connected to 
to an internet connection, um, you will only have access on your home console with your profile. So if internet access goes down here, the only way I could play my games is on the system that Tucker plays on. If there's no internet access, the only system he could play games that he has purchased would be on the console I play on. So I'm hoping that makes sense. So sharing your profile with a person, first off, don't do it unless you 100% trust them. Um, second of all, if you share with somebody that lives, you know, in another city or something, um, and their internet goes down, they're going to be totally hosed because they can't access your stuff. If your internet goes down, you couldn't access their stuff. So this whole system sharing thing does rely on an internet connection. So if you do not have a good internet connection, and so does the person that you're sharing with, don't do it. Um, most people nowadays do have decent internet connections, and so this is actually a really good idea. If you live in the same household, do this. Um, like is the example of me and Tucker. So I could just keep my home console there and be happy and I'd be fine. But Tucker wouldn't have very many games to play. He would literally only have a few games to play. Um, but since I put my home profile and make that my home console, then he has access to hundreds of games. So if you have any questions about that, let me know. And let me put in a plug real quick for Game Pass. Um, Game Pass is fantastic, and right here I'm, gonna, I'm just going to scroll through the games that are available for it. Um, so you can see the sheer number of games. Now this service costs $15 a month if you're paying full price. Don't do it. Um, never pay full price. Uh, there are places you can go to get discounts on memberships, usually they're in three month increments. Um, go to cdkeys.com and usually they have they have it where you can get this for 10 bucks a month. So do not pay full price. So let's just look at the list of games they have here. Um, I'm just gonna let this scroll through so you can see if you want to pause this video and look at the different games. Um, but you see the list is expansive and it is it is good. I mean, I was a naysayer of this service at first, but now I am fully on board with it. Fully on board. I actually really love this service. And there are a ton of games, and with the acquisition of Bethesda, all the Bethesda games are on there. And with the upcoming closure of the Activision Blizzard, which I think will go through, so Activision Blizzard has a ton of games, and to have those on Game Pass will make it to where, you know, it's a no-brainer. Because for the price of two full-price games a year, you're getting a service that lets you play hundreds of games. And any Microsoft titles, they put in straight away. They're there day one. Um, the upcoming Redfall is a good example. Um, wasn't too interested in that, but the more I saw of it, the more I thought, okay, it might not be bad. And then the fact that it'll be on Game Pass makes it to where it's a no-brainer. So I'll try that out, and we'll see how it goes. I'll definitely talk about that later. But, again, this is just a plug for system sharing. So, just to recap real quick, system sharing, great feature, uh, but be careful with it. You know, do not share your system information with anybody that you don't trust totally. Like you have to have complete trust in that person because uh, they could go in and mess up your account. Um, you know the game sharing, if you don't have a good internet connection don't do it. And if they don't have an inter good internet connection don't do it. But um, that leads into Game Pass because if you're making their system your, your home console and they make you yours, theirs, then you have access to their games, they have access to yours, you have access to everything between the two of you, so you only have to buy one copy of a game. If you know that you're going to be playing with that person, you know that you trust that person, you can buy one copy of the game and you both can play it. That is the benefits of it. 
um, fantastic. So that's my spiel. If you have any questions about that, let me know. Um, if you'd like further clarification on that, just let me know. And uh, yeah, that's all I'm at here. Have a good one.